So here's the basic problem. I got this welder, which is very nice. It's a little bit antiquated, but a very good machine. Uh, and the only thing is, it's very heavy, and there's no wheeled base on it, obviously. Uh, it weighs about 105 pounds. Oh, actually more than that. So I wanted to, first of all, get a cart for it. And then I thought, no, I, I want a wheeled base. What am I going to do? So um, I figured I'd make one. And so someone had actually drilled through the bottom here. You know, actually, I found the mounting screws in the welding machine, kind of fumbling around loose. Uh, check the welding machine. It's in very good shape, very good welder. Not to be discarded. So I started working on the parts that I have here. You can see uh, I got an old piece of uh, plate steel and uh, put it on the milling machine and made the holes actually match up to what was found in the machine. Uh, a little bit off uh, of regular, no problem. And then I started, uh, I have almost scrap here. Uh, figured I'd get that welded on there. And then I made these parts uh, to actually, you know, be welded on uh, either side with the axle going through it. And uh, so that's where we're at. I don't have it together yet, but we're going to make a cart that actually works. Uh, actually, on top of the metal, I'm going to put plywood so that the machine doesn't vibrate. In this part of the video, I'm going to demonstrate how to do an accurate hole layout so that when you get to, before you weld anything, that you've got holes uh, drilled uh, for your axle uh, that match up correctly to your wheel. Now, I just happen to have a 9-inch wheel. This is almost a discard item, but um, you see that the idea is you want the wheel to be sitting flat just like it's a dolly, any dolly uh, you know about. Uh, and I have this marking gauge set to exactly 4.5 inches, which is dead center for a 5 8 inch uh, axle. So we know what we're up against there. We're talking about half of um, half of the total uh, uh, diameter, and this is the cross member that I'm going to be welding the parts to. Which there is a left and a right hand part uh, that will actually hold the axle in place. Uh, so I'll just get rid of this. I don't need to show you that. Uh, one of the things I wanted to show you. Uh, is that I cut these angles very accurately on a horizontal uh, bandsaw. So I think you can see how these parts actually manage to line up exactly. We have a 45 degree angle actually on both both sides. Uh, and so why is that? And let me take, I believe this being, this is uh, the right hand part, so it's better to show the left hand part. This part's going to sit flat, so if I take this you just use your imagination. This is how it will look if it were welded on here. Uh, this is the left hand side. So if I were to have a line of plumb, which is, this is marked in 64, so 4 inches plus 32 64, you see we have the line of plumb here. And I believe you can see that. So then I set the marking gauge using this to get it exactly to 32 64 and I, I I didn't I'm not going to scribe now but I held this more securely when I did this and then I scribed uh, first you know I put the layout die on I got a center line and then the scribe line you can see a couple of false attempts there I I believe if I can get it the right angle yeah there were you know there's a little bit of error but I checked it made sure it was exactly the 4 and 32 64 uh, then I center punched so both of these parts now should be very accurate I'm going to locate another hole in there uh, for a backup uh, to another size of wheel if I ever needed it but I doubt I'll need to do that um, and if you if you take the time to lay it out you'll save yourself a lot of time and then the cart won't be at an angle and the wheels all kind of mixed up uh, you, you'll end up with a better result so that's how that part works this is the pre-welding setup so that you can see I've got two holes now. This is the 5 8 inch and the half inch. I just happen to have the half inch rod ready to make sure that that feeds through there. The clamping has to be pretty good because so, you're at an angle. So 
That's how I'm going to set up to do the tacking and then the welding. Took a while to get that set up. That's a flat piece of 70, 75 aluminum that it's attached to on top of a workbench. So we'll weld it up and then we'll check to see that we're still within range. Well, uh, pretty far along, the welding machine is now on the, the stand, the cart, and uh, we're just putting the wheels on here. Looking pretty good overall. I painted the cart to match as close as I could, and uh, out of scrap steel, not a bad use or reuse of uh, what you have on hand. The axle, uh, I left a bit long, and then uh, I also bored a bushing on the lathe. Uh, a little over 5 eighths of an inch uh, inside diameter. It doesn't matter how you do this part of it, it's just the way I do it. And then a washer, and then of course, wheel going on. The other washer, and then a cotter pin to go through there. After I get that, then I'll be taking it off the stand, and we'll see how it rolls. Well, here we go. We've got it together. The heavy-duty machine is on the heavy-duty cart and uh, painted to match. Everything looks good. And what I want to do now is demonstrate how maneuverable it either is or isn't. So let's have that. Okay. Not bad. But I'll tell you what, it's none too heavy-duty considering the weight. So, you know, not a bad use of scrap metal and your time and, you know, build it right the first time. I hope this helps and uh, thank you for watching.